Hi everyone, Shaked Baratal is here. I hope that everyone is having a wonderful Thursday evening. And ladies and gentlemen, tonight it's time for NFL season opener, September the 6th it is. And right now, just past 7 o'clock. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, in three days from now, yours and mine, Carolina Panthers, will open the season at home against the Dallas Cowboys. So ladies and gentlemen, let me make my prediction. But before I do that, before I do that, my friend, let me give you the keys for the game and I will then I will give you my prediction scoring outcome and who will win or maybe who knows maybe I, I will predict a tie so stay tuned at the end of the video for that so ladies and gentlemen as I look first at the visiting team the Dallas Cowboys the key for the Cowboys is to have success, balance, and offense. And what I mean is, the Dallas Cowboys have a great running back in Ezekiel Elliott. They have a good quarterback in Zach Prescott. But for the time being, they really don't have what you would call a number one wide receiver on the roster. They have good wide out who could later on in the season have a good s season. I'm talking about Cole Beasley. I'm talking about Trevor As Austin, who the Dallas Cowboys acquired from the LA Rams in the offseason. I'm talking about rookie wideout Michael Dunlap. But the Cowboys, an offense, for the first time, in very long time, they don't have Des Bryant, who they let, let go in the offseason. He's still unsigned, so Dallas or anyone else, if they want, they could sign him. And also, the future NFL Hall of Famer, in my opinion, Jason Whitman, retired. He played for the Cowboys for 13 years, ladies and gentlemen. He was a tremendous playmaker for Dallas so he retired so you look at the Cowboys you don't see someone who really scare you when it comes to the passing game and that is dangerous for Dallas for a couple of reasons number one a good team like the Carolina Panthers a pretty good defense like like the Carolina Panthers they could Realistically, old Zeke Elliott to less than 150 yard rushing for the game. And that should be enough for a Panthers win, my friend. And another thing to keep an eye on, Dallas is an indoor team. The weather for Sunday, Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte is calling for 60% of rain. Dallas doesn't used to practice or play in the rain. The Panthers on the other end are the outdoor team. So that could play a factor. Now for the Carolina Panthers, the key, in my opinion, for victory is the Panthers' offensive line win the battle at the line of scrimmage against a pretty good, vicious Vicious in a good way, not in a violent way, I should mention. But a pretty good, vicious, strong interior defense for the Dallas Cowboys. I'm talking about the Marcos Lawrence. I'm talking about Terod Crawford. Two outstanding defense of end. Then you add in Rand Rodney Gregory and Taco Chartman. And you have an outstanding Defense of tackle, defense of end. You also have a pretty good linebacker, linebacker group. Led by Sean Lee and Jalen Smith. So Dallas has the formula 
and defense to cause the Panthers a lot of problem. With the offensive line questionable for the Panthers, that could be a problem, my friend. I'm not going to lie. That could be a problem for the Panthers. However, here's where the Panthers have advantage. And that is a big advantage, in my opinion. The passing game. Dallas has a pretty good secondary. No question about that. However, in the NFL, it's very difficult, in my opinion, to stop the pass as well as the run at the same time. You're either going to shut down the running game or you're going to stop the passing game. The Panthers have an outstanding running back in Christian McCaffrey. They also have an additional pretty good running back in C.J. Anderson, Cameras out of Spain. And wide receiver group, they are loaded and they are underrated in my opinion. You have Devin Funches, you have Troy Smith, you have the rookie DJ Moe, you have Damiel Baird. And how can we not forget the soft target, the number one target for quarterback Cam Newton, Greg Olson. So, I feel like Dallas will be able to get pressure on Cam Newton. But I honestly don't believe it will be enough. I mean, they might sack Cam Newton maybe four times. But that, my friend, I don't believe it will be enough for Dallas' victory. As long as the Panthers do a good job of holding on to the ball. As long as they do a good job of holding Ezekiel Elliott for, un for less than 150 yards. The Panthers should win the game. Now, if the Panthers play sloppy, if they commit turnovers, if they have costly, bad costly penalties, then of course they can lose the game. And two things to keep an eye on for Dallas. Number one, their starting center, Travis Frederick, is not going to play, unfortunately, for him for Dallas, and of course for his family. He was diagnosed a couple of weeks ago with Kian Beret syndrome. And even though I'm not a Dallas Cowboys fan, I want to wish Travis Frederick a full help, health and a great recovery. Travis Frederick, my friend, the starting center for the Cowboys, hasn't missed a game in his career. And sure, it's been known for the last three weeks that he's not going to play. But my friend, practice is one thing. Another thing is to play in the real game. So that could be a factor. And the other factor, and that, my friend, is a mind-blowing, an head stretcher, which I honestly, I truly don't understand. Dallas Cowboys on cut days, NFL cut days, when teams have to get to the 53-man roster. On Saturday, they release all pro kicker Dan Bailey. Instead, they gave the, the job to a rookie kicker. Now, I'm sure that rookie kicker is a pretty good kicker. But ladies and gentlemen, when you have an outstanding kicker, who is basically Mr. Automatic from inside the 45-yard line. 45-yard attempt. You don't release him. Unless you're in cap L. Unless you're basically in cap problem L and you don't have any money. And you cannot rework his deal and you cannot work out a deal with another player to take less for now. Get more down the road. Then maybe you can justified it a bit but it's a mind-blowing and I feel like on Sunday that could play a factor and the Panthers overall they are relatively healthy sure you have Darren Will Darryl Williams you don't know if he's going to play or not I suspect that he's going to play you have I mean it's Sulutulu you don't know if he's going to play I suspect he will play of course the Panthers will be out with Without Thomas Davis, was suspended for the full first game of the season. 
Dallas will be without David Irving, who is also suspended for the fall game of the season. Now, my friend, it's time for the prediction. Since this game is in Charlotte, Panthers on the home team, and since it's going to potentially rain, plus what I said about the offensive playmaker for the Panthers against the Cowboys offensive playmaker, I'm going to go with the Panthers in a close one. 24 to 19. The Panthers will win. Panthers will score a late touchdown to pull on top and all done and win the game. And ladies and gentlemen, I like to get your comment, your suggestion, and as always, I will have a video after the game, recapping the game. Here on YouTube, you can find me on Twitter, at Sports Guy Show. You can find me on Facebook, Shaquette Bartal. You can find me on Instagram, at Sports Guy Show. I'd like to get your feedback regarding the video, what you like to see in a future video. And oh yeah, ladies and gentlemen, leave me a comment. I like to hear your thought. As always, you can reach me on social media. Up to hear from you. And I will see you, ladies and gentlemen, after my first video. After this video, I will see you on Sunday night recapping Panthers Cowboys games. And we will see if the Carolina Panthers will be 1 0 or will I be wrong. Either way, I'm going to have a video to talk about the game and talk about the Carolina Panthers week 2 game against the Atlanta Falcons. And with that, Shaquette Bartal, the sports guy show, is signing off.